Hi, I'm Kenny. I'm an independent filmmaker and I'm here to find out more about the rare earth. Malaysia caught news on the building of a rare earth plant rumoured to be built on the east coast of Malaysia. Not many people are aware of what the rare earth is about. All we know is it has posed great environmental hazard and health risks to the land and people living within the area. Over the years, we've heard a lot of controversy surrounding the rare earth and the concerns on the effect it has to the environment. The issue especially heightened when I found out that Linus was opening its processing plant in Malaysia. The question is, how much do we really know? Hybrid vehicles, smartphones, wind turbines, audio speakers, computer hard drives and displays, complex fluorescent lights, advanced defence systems and medical equipments. What do all these vital everyday items have in common? None of them would be possible without the use of rare earth-based material. Highly refined, exotic sounding elements such as lanthanum, cerium, neodymium, cimmerium, dysprosium and europium, they are used to create many of the products to keep our high-tech green energy world coming faster and more efficiently and increasingly smaller. Did we just join into the popular belief because simply it is popular? The government had approved the project. Don't they care about what the people want? Are they not concerned about the environment? So, having the questions in my mind, I have decided to do my own research. The first thing I have come to realise is how important rare earth is to our daily lives today and even in the future. About 50% of the things around us, you know, around us, are made of rare earth. How do we preserve the environment without effective alternatives? So to know this, I've decided to find out how much do we really know. No? I don't know. Rare earth? Yeah. Uh, no. no. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, um, how do you call it? When you process the earth, uh, there are some remnants which are um, very dangerous and it can affect the overall environment as well as the health of the people. So if I say rare earth in Malaysia, what would that bring straight to your mind? So the li Linus plant, is it? The, yeah. What is your perception about Linus? I think it's not good. Not good. Yeah. Because of, because of uh, maybe the waste may harmful to us. The waste, yeah. okay. It's very bad for the environment, I know. Okay. Where do you get the source of all this information that, that, that you know? I think mostly it's from the internet, I think. Facebook, internet and the newspaper as well. So, do you do more research onto it or you just leave it as it is? Uh, I never go for research, but I know this is not so good. But I support, you know. Empty like you know. So, it's really interesting, the feedback from the public. For what I gather, although many have opinions, when asked further, most are not even aware that they are already using technologies which has rare earth elements in them. And looking through the internet, I can see where they derive their conclusion from. Like them, I have signed the anti-Linus petition, you know, but maybe I'm not well informed due to my own ignorance. How would I know if I made the right decision or not? Let me be uh, clear on the outset. I'm okay. not part of Linus, I'm not paid by Linus, okay. but purely from a scientific point of view All and right. also economic point of view, uh, we did ask them, we said, why do you come to Malaysia? Okay. You could have gone to Australia where you were, you could have gone to China, which they did try, okay. and why Malaysia? So the reasons given was very simple. Four reasons. One is they say, we've got reasonably cheap electricity. Serious? Yes, cheaper than many of the other neighbouring countries. Oh. Two, we have got water. Yes. Australia did not have enough water. 
okay. for industrial purposes. And uh, number three, we have got very good infrastructure because the port is close to Gebbing, where the plant is. Okay. Roads are good, transportation system is good, okay. banking systems are good. These are some of the other okay. uh, non-physical infrastructure, <laughs> sort of financial infrastructure. And we also have human resource. Okay. True. So these are the four factors that make uh, Linus choose uh, Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. We were asked by the government to mm -hmm. say, okay, can you guys give a fair assessment about this particular uh, problem of radiation and so on? Means uh, without the government telling you what to do? Yes. We actually mentioned to government that if we do find it to be dangerous, we will say so. Okay. Because if it is dangerous, it is dangerous to us, to me, to my family, to you, and everybody else. We're not about to say, oh yes, it's alright, because somebody in government said so. And um, to the credit, I think the powers that be accepted uh, the terms okay. of engagement, okay. so to speak. So we, once we were given that uh, empowerment, we said, okay, we're going to call people from outside. They are the people who know about uh, rare earths. And, by the, and when we uh, went to visit the Linus plant, what is new are well, the uh, control systems, the computerized systems, the, okay. you know, these are the new things that has been put in. And he was looking at some of the plants, uh, he said that this is actually a Rolls Royce in its group of things. Okay. In other words, uh, somebody had spent a lot of money okay. to get the latest equipment. And in conclusion, they said that this is actually the most modern rare earth plant in the world. Now. Now. Now, I mean? Yes. In, in this in itself. Including China. China also do not have any more modern plant than what we have in here. You mean China now, the biggest processor of rare earth don't even have modern, as, as modern, modern as, as ours. Linus. Linus. This is what the experts say. I made an appointment with AELB, Atomic Energy Licensing Board today. So we're going to meet some experts to talk about radiation and radiation licensing. What is the safe radiation that human can get. How do you measure that? Kita ada unit yang digunakan untuk mengukur sinaran iaitu kekuatan bahan yang menghasilkan sinaran itu dalam unit becquerel BQ secara ringkasnya dan juga dos yang diterima oleh manusia kita ukur dalam unit siwat milisiwat. So to sum up all of these radiation facts to make it more simple, here is the simple fact of radiation. Radiation is all around us. Some of it comes from natural source which is the background radiation, and there is the artificial source, which is man-made. Natural or background source includes rocks and soil, which has radioactivity and give off radiation radon gas. Building and ground also emits background radiation. Food and drinks also have radiation when they absorb radioactive materials from the soil, and then they pass up to the food chain. Cosmic rays from the space also generate radiation to Earth. There is little we can do about natural background radiation. After all, we cannot stop eating, drinking or breathe to avoid it. Human activity has added to background radiation by creating and using artificial source of radiation. This includes radioactive waste from nuclear power stations, radioactive fallout from nuclear weapons testing and medical x-rays. So, rare earth processing in Linus drops in the category of background radiation. Rare earth nadir bumi uh, bukan merupakan bahan radioaktif. Uh, raw material, ya, bahan mentah, di, uh, bahan mentah ini dilombong. Okay. Okay, bahan mentah from the ground. Ah, uh, yang di lombong okay. mine ya. Mine, okay. Okay, yang uh, bahan mentah mine di lombong. Alright. Okay, melalui satu proses. Uh, kebanyakannya ada kebiasaannya adalah proses kimia, eh, chemical, okay. tambah chemical. Okay, proses kimia untuk menghasilkan rare earth ya, nadir bumi. Kebanyakan semua bahan yang dilombong akan mengandungi bahan radioaktif semula jadi semula norm jadi ya. Norm. Okay. Okay. Uh, sama seperti petroleum, pelombongan petroleum, pelombongan biji timah di Malaysia, semuanya mengandungi norm. Contohnya macam Linus, bahan mentah yang digunakan adalah uh, pekatan lantanite. Okay, lantanite. 
Lantenai ini Lantenai. di Lombok, okay. di kawasan pelombongan di Australia Barat. So, hmm. uh, Lantenai ini mengandungi bahan radioaktif semula jadi, norm, kepekatan aktiviti uh, bahan uh, apa thorium ataupun bahan radioaktif semula jadi dalam lantenai ini lebih kurang 5 becquerel per gram. 5 ya? becquerel okay. per gram. Okay. Per gram. So, melalui proses kimia di mana uh, terdapat beberapa bahan kimia yang dicampurkan dalam proses ini dan ia menghasilkan uh, rare earth. earth. Rare Alright. earth element ni uh, sangat berharga yang digunakan dalam industri uh, industri green technology sekarang seperti hybrid car, oh, okay. uh, handphone dan sebagainya. Okay. So dalam proses ini juga menghasilkan uh, by product seperti gypsum misalnya. Untuk kes ini lainnya uh, sisa yang dihasilkan dalam kepekatan aktiviti radionuklat semula jadi lebih kurang 5 hingga 6 becquerel per gram. In simple form, Malaysia radiation rules is so strict that any radioactive material reading that pass one back row must be handled as radioactive. But for the rest of the world like United Kingdom, any material radiation above five back row only must be handled as radioactive. And IAEA rules is any material surpass 10 back row is radioactive. So, Malaysia radiation rules is so much tougher than the rest of the world. Merujuk kepada Undang-Undang Malaysia, hard dos tahunan yang boleh diterima oleh orang awam adalah 1 milisivert. Bila kita katakan hard dos untuk orang awam adalah 1 milisivert, tidak bermakna bila kita menerima lebih 1 milisivert contohnya, 2 atau 3 milisivert, kita terus mati. Okay. Itu adalah dos yang ditetapkan untuk orang awam. Kita cuba meminimumkan dos kepada orang awam seminimum yang mungkin. Walau bagaimanapun, kesan sinaran kepada kesihatan tidak memberikan kesan apa-apa pada dos yang kurang daripada 200 uh, milisivert. Walau bagaimanapun internasional ya uh, pihak antarabangsa ICRP dan juga uh, IAEA menyatakan bagi dos melebihi 8000 milisivert ke atas baru memberikan kesan fatal effect. I'm guilty of being ignorant all this while not seeing how important is the rare earth industry to Malaysia and the impact it has for the future of Malaysia. It is such a shame that unknown to many, the perception formed to them could well be sabotaging the very industry that will propel us into the future and not being left behind. But at what price? I think that is something I need to see for myself to understand it further. In route, the view is fantastic. I can't help but thinking the environment issue is key in preserving the livelihood of the people around the area. I'm curious to know how does processing the rare earth affect what I see now? Well, all this that is here today be gone tomorrow. I sure hope not. So here we are at the Linus Advanced Material Plant or LAM for short in Gaving, Kuantan. With the petroleum and chemical plants surrounding this place, one can't help but think Gabing is definitely a hub of processing plants for natural resources. But what does this do to the community here? How much are they affected by the plant? I have decided to see how people feel about the rare earth processing plant being here at their doorstep. Maaf boss, saya nak tanya, saya buat documentary untuk TV. Saya nak tanya tentang uh, saya buat dokumentari tentang uh, tu, uh, tanah nadi bumi. Tanah Boleh, nadi nadi bumi. Ah ni macam Alina. Oh, wah, injek tau. Ha. Boleh saya boleh interview sikit tak? Hmm. Tentang semua orang. Tentang saya perasaan. pernah masuk Linas. Ah ha, itu saja. Itu saja. Bagi saya ha. benda ni tak ada masalah langsung. Saya masuk. Dalam tak ada masalah. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Okey. Okey, bersih dia. So, dia selamat. Sepatutnya kan. Sorry lah eh. Ha, tak apa. Sepatutnya you tanya sebelum benda ni dilakukan. Ha. Tapi sekarang apabila benda ni dah dilakukan, okay. dah dah jalan, tak ada arti. Apabila dia buat begini, ha. apabila dia buat demi kerja so, dia buat kajian dah. Berapa penduduk yang sokong, berapa penduduk tak yang tak, ini hmm. tapi te, tapi Aduh, saya dah cakap akhir tadi tak saya cerita tadi kalau, cakap, kalau ayah, ayah ada kuasa kalau, dia boleh buat kalau, itu saja fantastic interview with Kuantan people there so we want to find more people to interview definitely not liking why because of 
What's the problem? Pollution, contamination. Actually,我们不太了解我本身不太了解 totally object it Yeah, it's terrible and All I know that it's radioactive, it's very harmful Yeah, and it harms life and then once you bury it under earth, it still be there forever and ever and ever To be honest, uh, I think that Linus shouldn't be here at Kuantan You have been to Linus, right? Yeah uh, Do you think what they're doing now have they taken all the precaution for the safety of the workers and the public and the people of Malaysia? They have done more than uh, an average. In fact, as far as in terms of radiation concern, it's so low. Uh, you notice one thing, yes. they don't carry a dosimeter, no? yes, a meter. Yes. Unlike our hospital, yes. uh, every hospital in the radiology department, they have to yes, carry the cut, a patch yeah, uh, to, to see how radiation, much radiation, radiation there. Yeah. The radiation in our hospital is far, far higher than that in Linus. In Linus, so low, they just couldn't be bothered. That's why I told the officers in Linus. Yeah. I would like to uh, take a photograph of me you know, sitting on those L, uh, WLP, WLPs, you know, the sitting on the waste. Those, yeah. And if they uh, don't mind, uh, if they give the whole waste to my garden, I take it back to my whole house. And okay, I think we are on the right track. So we got a 150 meter away to Linus, Malaysia. Okay, let's see what we can do today. Let's see if we can go in interview, get some footages of Linus. Firstly, being here, I'm a little surprised to see that the fences surrounding the area are low and not what I have imagined. I've always had a vision in my mind that the plant will be like a top security nuclear reactor plant with security checking point at every foot of the area and men wearing astronaut suits walking around with their oxygen tank on their backs. Perhaps this perception is formed by the scene from some movies like The Simpsons and Outbreak and etc. But I know I'm completely off grid when it comes to rare earth uh, with the information I've gained recently. But one can't really share these images off easily unless I really find out what goes on in Linus for myself. To provide this extra confidence to the public, okay. Linus has um, installed this digital display All right. that actually displays the air emission quality, the water quality of whatever mm -hmm. effort discharge they will release to the environment. At the same time, this particular information is fed directly online, real time, to okay. the Department of Environment. We are now at the Lanternite Concentrate Area. Okay. When the shipment from Mountwell comes in into port, uh, Quantan Port, okay. it will immediately be transported in a double liner uh, bag, about 2.1 ton, All right. uh, into a, on a container and will be stored temporarily at this lanternite concentrate yard. So they come in container like this? They come in container like this. In Malaysia, because of our strict regulation, okay. Okay, we need to label this All right. during transport. This is our lanternite concentrate. I see. Right now. It is ordin an ordinary soil, as you can see. Oh, okay. Very moist. In fact, you do not see it, you will not be able to see dust. Now, if I stand here where you are now, okay. I'm standing, and if I want to get exposed, this is a reading which I'll be getting okay. 2.3 times. Yeah? All right. That is very low compared to what we have. Bottom line is this reading, yes, there's radiation. Yes. Okay. But the radiation is lower than the permissible limit. Yes. Workers here are safe. Correct. It goes in like that and it goes up all the way to the top. So, so that wind or rain, you will not expose all the things to fly out, right? Yes. It so goes into the rotary kiln. Rotary kiln. It will mix with acid. All right. Heat it up to a high temperature. You notice it is this rotating. Thing. This is where the acid is. The, the acid, the acid. Yes. Because it's uh, acid is added, sulfuric acid is added. It is mixed. 
and then its uh, temperature is raised up to about 800 degrees sometimes, you know. So as it goes in, of course, all the gases that comes in will go through this waste gas treatment facility. Okay. Okay? This waste gas will make sure all our air effluent okay. is within the permissible limit. So what does it really, really shoot up then? This thing that you see? Yeah. Water. Water? That's all? Yes. We have monitoring system in there uh -huh. that monitors 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Oh. And it is online to the authorities, to the Department of Environment. Having said that, there are six independent committees that actually reviewed liner safety. One of them is, of course, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the higher oh, body okay. they can actually right. review it. Now, that alone, plus the regulatory control, and also equally important are the client that is buying this Linus product. Mm -hmm. They also do their own independent assessment on oh. Linus safety, health, and environment. Serious. For them to put up the green logo, they oh. must make sure the place that they buy from, the source that they buy from, actually subscribe to that standard. Oh, okay, I didn't so, know that, okay. Even if you don't trust the government, if you don't trust the authority, you must trust the client, the buyers, who buys oh. this. This is our control room. All right. Uh, the, as I told you, this is not a labor-intensive plant. So, right. And most of the work that is done here are automated. Mm. So you notice that these are control room, and the control room will monitor what to, how much to put in, what to put in, and when to put in. When we uh, extract leach from the uh, cracking and leaching, okay. it goes into the stubborn extraction process. Okay. Very simple process. No radioactive material here. Oh, okay. No radiation. It's just a simple extraction process. And if you notice that these are all at normal room temperature, mm. uh, and, and ambient pressure. Okay. So that's it. So this is a tunnel furnace area okay. where we bake our product. Radioactivity. No, no, there's no radioactive, no radioactive no. travel. Right. Our product consists of SEGs, okay. uh, cerium, All right. LACE, which is a latinum cerium, and latinum, and, okay. and PRND. Okay, so what are all these used for? What, what you mean your customer overseas buy to, for what? Okay, use? some use for polishing powder, okay. some use uh, for the uh, hybrid, hybrid technology, uh, oh. green technologies, uh, they make it uh, magnet. Uh, oh, powerful okay. magnet and etc. Oh. So mostly it's uh, more into the green technology. We just packing and uh -huh. then uh, we will take sample, send to uh, lab. If okay, then we send to customer. So we're waiting for the approval to go in. All right. Let's see what the lab personnel say. Let's take a peep, peep, peep through and see what 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 is this lab all about. Our lab is uh, mainly for testing the materials and also for the test uh, the in process products okay. and the final products such as uh, lansom carbonate, serum carbonate, and uh, PR and ND oxide. Oh, okay. okay. So you just to test the quality yeah. and everything. Okay. This okay. is a final product. Oh, this final product. Uh, this already. is final product already. Alright. So our customer uh, take it as a company. Oh. So what is this used for when your customer? Uh, this one normally as a polishing powder. Oh, like polishing lens or what? Yes, yes, correct. Right. Oh, this is the one. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, this no, is money, a... huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Oya buys this for you know the camera lenses. Camera lenses yes. to polish the camera right. lenses. This is it. Maybe in the future, you know, you have you know those glass wall. Yeah. Now you have to clean it, right? Yes. Because that will stick. Yes. But if you were to polish it with cerium, you know, you get it so fine that you may not even need no people to clean it anymore. Me. Yeah. Wow. One of the systems that we use is, of course, the reverse osmosis. This is, of course, state of the art, the most expensive. Anybody knows reverse osmosis, reverse osmosis okay. which gives you pure water. So whatever waste water is being right. recycled here. That's right, and it goes back into the system. It's reused. Okay. So oh. we don't the, the question of using water, a lot of water that doesn't arise because we recycle the water. Okay. And of course those that are already being treated, yeah. like what you see here, this is our storm retention pond. Oh. Uh, okay. This, okay, this is a storm, this is the last point All before right. the water is discharged into the nearby river. But that is being discharged only when the authorities approve it, right? That's awesome. right, that's right. We are the uh, temporary residual storage facility. Alright, so I can see that uh, this is the residue, right? Correct. So how, how, how is it transported here? When the, uh, what we call the water leach purification residue yes. comes out from the filter press, okay. which is over the building over there, All right. okay, it is transported by truck, okay. dedicated truck, to be dumped into this area. All right. This is called the temporary storage, residual storage facility, but designed and built as if it is permanent. 
Okay. The reason being, so if you notice, there Why? is also because we want to make sure we have the best temporary storage facility. Even if it's temporary, we want the best temporary storage facility. And that's why you see we have just visibly you can see the black high density polyethylene mm -hmm. liner that actually prevents water from seeping into the ground. The soil. Okay, into the so-called water table underneath. Ah, it. okay. But to make sure that does not happen, we also have underlying leak detection system. This particular facility, the RSF radio accessory facility, is actually built above ground. Yeah. It is not dug that, into. That's why. Most well, like, people would dug. Exactly. Why, why, why well, we? because we want to separate. We want to increase the distance from the water table to the lowest point where we have the, the, the WLP. Oh, I see. I see. So, okay, okay. a lot of uh, misconception. People think that the public think that some of the public think that we actually dig. Dig, the yeah. Soil. We don't dig the soil. We build above it. What if really it, it, it goes through? What, what will happen? If I were to explain to you the chemistry behind it, <laughs> the uranium and thorium itself, yes. actually, it's non-soluble. Okay. And it would absorb to the clay that is just underneath the uh, high-density polyethylene layer. Right. So there is so many, uh, the, the chemistry of the, the radionuclide itself, the secondary protection, the underlying lead detection system, yeah, is there to protect. So, what happens if it's dry here? Okay. What happens if it becomes powdery? Ah. You know, so if the wind blows, then up. you know we do not want to have this, this, this fear that the dust is flying all over ah. the place. So one way of making sure that does not happen is to make sure that the material here, the WLP, is always moist. moist. And we use this, to wet it down oh, if necessary. Okay. But we have yet to use it, to be honest oh, with you. You haven't used it yet? No, because if you look at the uh, the area, yeah, it's already water. moist. Yeah. And we got rain, it comes into here. Yep, like again, now, it's yeah. raining now. And you must remember, whatever water that goes into here will not be released into the environment. Ah. It will be recycled and will be treated. Oh. Here we use uh, industrial waste from the palm oil plantation. You mean from all, all this? Yeah, these are palm oil fuel ash, if you notice there. Okay. You know, when you burn the uh, palm oil mm. um, waste, you get ashes, right? Yes. So that ash is mixed with steel slag, you know, and then mixed with crusher run, mixed with our WLP, okay. and we get what we call the bound aggregate. Okay. So this bound aggregate is a, is a better material for road base. The material that we produce here yeah. will not be radioactive. Okay. Because it contains less than one becquerel per gram All right. radioactive material. Okay. So when we do the road base, when we say we build, we make the road base material, it is a non-radioactive okay. material. So you're a Kuantan person, right? Are you? Um, or from a, no, no, I'm Sungai Buloh. Sungai Buloh, huh? Yeah. Come to Kuantan here to work? Yes, yes. Okay, ask you, why did you come to Linus to work? Because I see there's an opportunity in Linus. This is a new industry in Malaysia. Okay. So I'd like to adventure it. Aren't you afraid? Because everyone was protesting, talking about radiation mm. and all those. Aren't you afraid? Bring Normally, uh, I believe on the fact. Okay. So I don't believe on the people talking only. Sharif, kan? Yes, I So, am. so you orang dari mana? Kuantan ke? Atau mana? Saya orang Kuantan. Orang Kuantan? Orang Kuantan. Okay. So, awak sudah bekerja di sini berapa bulan ke? Berapa tahun? Uh, dua tahun lebih lah. Oh, dua tahun lebih? So, ada... Apa ketukaran uh, kerana banyak orang luar kata radiasi besar lah macam nuklear lah ada apa? Tak ada. Tak ada. Esok ni tak ada, tak ada radiasi pun tak ada sini semua sini free punya bebas radiasi punya dekat okay. esok ni. How long have you been working in Linus? Already four years. Four years? Yes. So you know the in and out of Linus. Yes, right. right. So do you feel safe working here? Sure. So many if not safe already, it's left. already quite left. So like a lot of people <laughs> saying that radiation is so high, this and that, you know. What it's would... nothing, actually nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Because so, I am handled the concentrate since day one. Since day one? Yes. So what is your reading on radiation on you? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay. You are the longest now. I have interviewed four years you're here. They say, okay lah, you know, if we want to come in and see, Linus sure hide something one. <laughs> How to hide? We uh, want to say uh, RSF also, very big, huge quantity, mm -hmm. we cannot hide. Okay. <laughs> Why did you apply to work for Linus when you know there are so many people protesting? Well, I find this is actually a very, uh, for the position that they offer to me, it's a very mm -hmm. challenging and interesting post, so I'd like to have a try. Okay, yep. then mm -hmm. when you found out that on the news there were so many yes. people were against this Linus, mm -hmm. What was your feeling? You wanted to resign or stay on or what? I'll stay on. Yeah, I feel positive with Linus. I can see now you're pregnant. Yes, yeah. Uh, how many months would that be? Five months. Five months. Mm. So you had no fear about...
still working, still working, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. During yeah. pregnant time. Yeah. All right. So this shows that mm -hmm. you are positive. That you can tell people that it's very, very safe. No radiation, high radiation, no yeah. chemical. Mm -hmm. Linus success is critical, but can you see the wider impact whereby Malaysia will be the industrial yes. hub for manufacturing products using red earth? Now I see it. It's very no, no, wide. Can, can you see a, yes, a, a bigger picture? It, a very big. I, I, big I quote picture. you an example. You look, even, you know, uh, these hybrid cars. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether I can mention or not. But, example, just take the battery. In a hybrid car, there are many components. The battery uh, is made from our product. Okay. The various components, the magnets, the motor, Correct. is also made from our product. Let's take the, 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 the battery itself. Okay. okay. The battery itself today is a one billion dollar uh, market. Yep. It is going to be four to five billion dollar in, in the future. Uh, to, uh, you are talking about in maybe six or seven years time. So can you imagine if this manufacturer of this battery, which is uh, highly technical, yes, is willing to to, come. to relocate their industry in Malaysia? So can you imagine the technology? Of course, the uh, the 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 job creation yes. and the investment, but we talk about technology. So we get new technology, we, we learn more. Yes, new yes. Therefore, you can see that if Linus is successful, yes. hopefully Malaysia, not, not necessarily Kuantan, but anywhere in Malaysia, it will become a rare earth industrial hub. Wow, that will so be... So you, you see the bigger picture? I see the bigger picture. Okay. Well, Linus now, mm. with all these allegations from outside, okay, mm. negative stuff, and will Linus open to the public for a tour just to let, educate the public? I have given various statements. Yes. Linus invite, be it individual or organization or political parties or professional parties, you are welcome at any time to come and visit the plan. Right. When you come and visit the plan, you can, you can see for yourself you can touch, you can review our documents, you can see all our readings because the plan is already operational. Yes. So we now have real readings which are well below the limit set by the national and the international standards. So come, okay. we, you are most welcome. Please come and see for yourself. Rare mining had begun 80 years ago in many countries. Today, China produces 97% of the world's rare earth consumption. As a result, China monopolizing the market, controlling and restricts the export of rare earth materials outside of China. They also impose up to 25% of import export taxes, especially on rare earth. Japan's technological industry relies heavily on China's rare earth that they crumble to China's every demand. Due to this control and monopolization and the high demand of this supply, the United States have restarted their rare earth mining in various parts of its states, such as California, Idaho, Montana, and, and some other parts. A market-based solution are needed outside of China, and Malaysia had become the solution for Australia Linus rare earth industry. Linus is spending 2.5 billion ringgit on building the processing plant and the other revenues are trickling down from its operations and are being monitored closely by the International Body of Atomic Energy Licensing Board as well as the Malaysian Department of Environment. Malaysia is a signatory of an international treaty which has to follow the international regulations before approving any atomic or nuclear activities which makes it impossible for Malaysia to be allowed to process anything with higher level of atomic or nuclear activities. We're going to walk through with AELB, the Atomic uh, Energy Licensing Board, okay, to do the inspection of LENAS today. Let's go. So this is the sampling station. What, what do you put here? This is uh, the TLD. Alright. Okay, this we are going to detect the gamma radiation. Okay, detect gamma radiation. Yeah. Alright. So, uh, every two months, we put uh, the TLD here. And we are going to change every two months. Oh, check every two months? Yeah. We are okay. going to send this to nuclear for uh, to analyze. To analyze to how much uh, the radiation. Much radiation. But this is to calculate the surroundings. Yeah, yeah. So, how many are there, this one? Uh, we have 19 sampling points. 
19 sampling points. Throughout all the plants, is there any increasing that you start uh, investigating why this happened? Okay. So, After this, and what would that be? So then we do the uh, in situ also. Now the reading is about 0.0. 9.5 micro sieve per hour. Micro sieve, so it's so small, micro. 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 So no harm to humans, no harm to anything yeah. at all. Grant the permit, then the, the, the shipment will come. Okay. PLD we put uh, in the black plastic. Same, same, same thing. Same, same, same thing. Same, same process and same everything. Process. Okay. So reading also at, at 0 0.153. Also low. 49 now. 0 0.149. No change from there to here. This river, because it's so near to Linus, I mean the drainage and even whatever they have might accidentally spill out, right? Just, just to make sure this is to test it. Is it reading now, that soil? Mm. Zero. Zero point eight. Zero point eight. One Zero point eight. Zero point one. It's going eight. also up by one. Mm. Not. Again, still not, not very high radiation. This is one of the residues. Residues, one of it, okay. Okay, known as FGD, that's a regulator from ALB. Uh, kami menjalankan pemerintahan di sini untuk memastikan residu ini tidak membahayakan kepada pekerja. Bacaan kepada para sinaran sekat di kawasan. 104143, 129, don't spike a lot. Uh, what would this residue be? Okay, we call uh, residue, this residue is NUF. NUF. Yeah. Look at the reading. 186. It's a spike a bit again. Normal. So, we are at the final spot of the residue. Let's check out the meter and see what, what does it read. How high does it go? So, it's still, it's still at safe level for human beings. Cleaning my shoes. How much is that? Z around 0 0.2. That low? Even I step foot onto the waste area, the high radiation waste area. So that proves it. What high radiation do we have? Cool. I feel safe now. All right. Very good, very good. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kini dia tidak uh, mematuhi syarat-syarat kelulusan, so kita boleh keluarkan kita perah uh, kuatir dalam sekeliling, boleh keluarkan arahan untuk uh, hilang tersebut berhenti operasi. Jadi itu lagi akan menjejaskan apa ni uh, operasi hilang tersebut dan hilang saya pasti tidak akan mahu perkara ini berlaku hmm. pada mereka sebab dia akan memberi implikasi yang besar terhadap, terhadap ekonomi mereka nanti lah. So they are taking samples from this final discharge point before it's being released to the river. All right, just to make sure there's no contamination of radiation and other chemicals. After they were sent to the lab, so, so far I've asked them for two years, three years, there's nothing being discharged into the river that would harm human beings or even other fish, you know, in the river. Having gone through this fact-finding journey, it surprised me to know that there are layers of governments imposed ruling that corporations dealing with radioactive materials such as Linus had to observe. I am even more surprised and thrilled to see that the safety and environmental protection measure, rules and regulations are in fact very stringent in this country.
let's say if this plan okay this plan or liners or whoever which company wants to apply a license let's say they don't comply to your rules and regulation and they want to get it fast is there a way to do that absolutely not there's no way no shortcut everybody has to go through the same procedures same because we are applying the same regulations to all the companies that need to be licensed so strictly no shortcuts from A to Z, they have to follow the procedures and everything is done online also. We have now e-licensing process, mm -hmm. so they can go to the website and then they can request for the license. They have to state what they're doing with the radiation material and then they have to say how much mm -hmm. it is and then they have to uh, actually give full details about how what they're going to do with this particular material. Mm -hmm. And then they also have to furnish to us their radiation protection plan and then their uh, emergency procedure plans oh, and then okay. the decommissioning plan and then how they're going to deal with the waste uh, the manage waste management plan so they have to put all these documents in place and then we will evaluate them before we make the final, make decision. The final decision yeah wow. The door to the future opportunity is opening wide and rare earth processing could be Malaysia's next biggest economic contribution when the agricultural industry starts to decline Every day, we are exposed to some form of radiation. In my personal opinion, many of us want the latest technology for our personal use to make our lives easier and more efficient. Draw your own conclusion. Do your research. Here are some credible links for you to start your research. Go and visit them. You'll be surprised to know what you think you know is perhaps far from the truth. If really we found out that Linus has nothing to do with environment problem, no radiation, nothing, what would your perception be? Then if it's safe for the environment, there's no evidence to support it, then I think it should be a project that can go on, you know, because um, we have to look at it in terms of the economic aspects as well. How, what benefits will it bring to the country or to the region in which it is based? Well, if there's uh, no, I mean, there is no uh, impact of uh, any factory, then of course it's okay to be in Malaysia. If it is really, really safe, I think it's, it is should be here. It is, it is can be uh, give more job opportunity to Malaysia. Teach people everything, especially this, these important things like radiation and so on. They should have a, at least a few lessons on basic radiation, so at least people realize it and not be easily misled by a, a certain people. For their own good. Uh, berapa tahun berniaga dekat sini, yeah. dekat Liners? Um, dua tahun saja. Dua tahun? Ya. Yeah. So, tak takut ke tentang redaksi apa? Saya rasa tak ada masalah. Nak bangunkan kawasan industri KB ni, banyak kan lagi kat kan, macam ha. PDL, PDRONAH, kan, yeah. BSL lagi bahaya. Semua semua bahaya. Dulu bila dia buka, awak nak datang sini berniaga, ada takut tak sikit? Dulu masa mula-mula tak tahu kilang ni macam mana situasi, Aha. memang takutlah. Sampai sekarang ni saya tengok sendiri macam mana dia orang buat operasi, macam mana dia orang perlu bekerja, Aha. saya rasa tak ada masalah. Tak ada masalah. So kesihatan pun tak ada masalah? Buat semasa sekarang tak ada masalah. Tak ada masalah. Tak ada masalah.